Hi everyone, this is Sovereign Key, Lao de Leon. The discussion tonight is going to be twin flames. What what is what is twin flames? What what does that mean? Soulmates. Soulmates, twin flames. Are there differences? Yes. Yeah, there are, and there's a lot of there's a lot of misunderstandings when it comes to twin flames and the entire twin flame uh, dynamic with regards to the original spark and how we became a duality within ourselves. And at that moment in time, when we became a duality within all ourselves, that is when all of this occurred. That is when we desire to have connection with our other half. That is when we really experience loneliness. So is there any validity to the twin flame history? Yep, actually there is. There is a lot of validity. It has been written about uh, in ancient times, written about in ancient uh, Greece. It was written about in ancient Samaria. Um, there is a lot about this dynamic because this is about us. This is about our, our own duality <laughs> that split off from ourselves. A lot of people are under the belief that they have met their twin flame and a lot of people are extremely confused because the experiences that they're going through are extremely extremely challenging dare I say volatile people are actually thinking that the twin flame dynamic means volatility no no first of all the amount of people, beings, who would ever experience their twin flame here within this inverted realm is so rare for two souls who are part of each other to meet in manifested flesh in this inverted realm. Genuinely, it would mean that both would have been able to have done the work throughout their journey and evolution to get them to this point. And upon that, that they would both be ready to actualize their becoming. Does that mean that they're gonna to be together as partners? No, 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 it doesn't. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have a marriage and love and a family. It doesn't mean any of that. And I know everybody wants it to. And I know people are clinging to the desire that, that that's how it goes. This largely plays on the programming in the world that we really need a relationship and we really need love from a relationship to be able to be whole. It plays on the entire programming of a world that's been MK'd. But in actuality, no. If two twin flames do happen to be manifested in the flesh at the same time here in this realm they don't necessarily have to be connected they already are connected what they're doing in their perspective areas and parts is that they are actually doing the work wherever they are and they don't need to be a couple this whole this whole in, endeavor and obsession with coupling. I want to explain that mostly everyone here is struggling within themselves to accept themselves. They're struggling. We're all struggling to love ourselves. We have not even gotten there yet. So how, if we, if we can't even love ourselves, how can we even think about twin flames? How can we even think about a partnership and meeting our other half? This is all based on us really desiring somebody else to come into our lives to make us whole. But that's, that's not true. This is not true. This is exactly what's leading everybody astray and away from yourself. And I'm not saying we're meant to be alone. No, we're not meant to be alone. We're meant to be a community together. We're meant to be a community. Something is really rare. It barely happens. But 
are we meant to have an obsession that we need to have filled via someone else? Should we not be filled within ourselves first and not expect anything at all? And then the universe just will provide you that as a compliment to yourself. You will compliment one another. Most of what is happening with regards to this twin flame is not a twin flame. It's a twin nightmare. It's a mirroring projection that is based on a counterfeit system. This is a counterfeit partner who essentially is mirroring you. But not just the mirroring of you so that you actually fall for you while you think you're falling for your real twin flame or your soulmate. You're not falling for your twin anything. You're actually just seeing a mirror of you. <laughs> you're falling for that. And what's being projected back to you, which is causing the volatility, but what's being projected at the same time is the person's projections of themselves while mirroring you. So it becomes very distorted. You end up getting a very distorted dynamic that ends up being an abusive cycle. This is not love. This is not twin flames and it's not twin souls. It's not twin anything. It is an imprinting, counterfeiting. And it's to seduce you, trap you, if you will. It targets primes, it targets meccas, it targets those that are reals. It doesn't waste its time with backdrops. It doesn't waste its time with reanimates and projections of the hologram. It doesn't waste its time with that. It targets what's real. It targets the prime element. <laughs> and when it hooks in, it gets right in there psychically because this is some kind of psychic technology that they have. It is an astral psychic technology that is able to get right inside you. And when it gets right inside you, it can get right into your core wounds. It can get into your core everything. And when it does that, it uses it as a weapon against you. So you see, you're being seduced, you're being put into a spell, and it's very much like a drug. It's very much like you're being injected with the drug that you need and want, and that's what keeps you hooked in, while at the same time, this counterfeit, this counterfeit energy, is getting into your core and it's utilizing everything it's linking into against you your upbringing your weaknesses your vulnerabilities the things that you held dear to your heart that you've been dealing with your whole life but that you're not exactly verbal about mm, these counterfeits have these counterfeits can access and then they use it against you but only after you've been drugged. So you're drugged with your own mirror reflection. You fall in love with the reflection of you. When you meet these counterfeits, you feel like, God, I just feel so at home with this person, like they're my other half. You fall in love with the beauty that they're mirroring to you because that's your beauty. They're using the mirror to trap you. And it's you falling in love with you. So what happens after you fall in love with you and you're now connected to this counterfeit, who can hack you exceptionally well? This is what begins this whole journey where people get lost thinking that they're actually with their twin flame because they can't separate themselves from what they feel is their other half because they feel their other half as though it's them. It's like, this is themselves. This is their other half. Surely through all of this volatility, surely through all of this 
dysregulated emotion and this chaos and this like sabotage and this really strange distorted thinking and inverted reality surely it's because they're your twin flame that this is happening right this is your twin flame that's why it's all happening because you've never had this happen before you never in your life ever been so connected to anybody like this before this is how it works this is the last thing that is your twin flame this is nothing remotely like a twin it's your twin nightmare this is a counterfeit literally a counterfeit who i mean i we can discuss usually what the dynamic is between these two people the codependent and the one who is the reflector projector who is the one that has the emotional dysregulation who has usually rage who inverts everything with dysregulated thinking towards the codependent the codependent being the one who just thinks that this is this has got to be a twin flame what ensues typically in this situation is that the mirror can't be sustained for long that mirror reflection cannot hold out because essentially the counterfeit can't maintain it so the deeper you go into this dynamic and this relationship the deeper you get involved in this cycle of abuse abuse is never love and abuse is never justified it is a dysfunction it is the reverse of love and now you're dealing with someone whose child is hooked into your child both of these children have never ever been able to heal from their core wounds so you're getting a dynamic between two children who recognize that they're both wounded this is this is the, the heart of this dynamic it this is what it is at the heart it is two children who never evolved who never got beyond any of their core wounds and never really grew up and now they find themselves adults in an adult world but they're not equipped so typically speaking the counterfeit will have an entire history of relationships that have been sabotaged um they won't ever be real about it because it'll always be somebody else's fault just the same as you're going to be next you're going to be the next one that's going to be blamed <laughs> it's never going to be them this also falls into uh narcissism a lot of borderline personality disorder traits uh this falls into many aspects many many aspects of arrested development of the person and of you too because there are aspects of you that never developed and that's why you couldn't see through the mirror to see what it really was and then you found yourself inside a situation that you couldn't control anymore and it was confusing because you were being literally pulled inside a complete inverted version of reality which questioned your ability to be reasonable and see what was really going on because even at the beginning when you think you know what's going on they managed to twist you around like a pretzel so you don't know at the end you're the one apologizing to them when it's not you because you've been gaslighted because you've been made out to be the culprit because you are deficient because you're never doing enough because all manner of things that are all related to this volatile cycle of abuse this is not twin flame because they say well if you meet your twin flame it's going to be the most challenging thing you've ever ever had in your life well yes that's true but it isn't going to be a volatile relationship it's not going to be a cycle of abuse it's not going to be that you're both going to literally bring out the worst in each other that is not a twin flame dynamic that isn't a twin soul twin flame soulmate that's nothing that's a counterfeit predatory relationship 
What's behind a counterfeit? Why would a counterfeit target you? They, they don't know they target you. They're just doing what they do. They do naturally what they do. They don't target people that they can't feed off of. They don't target people that they can't get anything from. They go to the primes. They go where they can feed the most. They go to the good people, the beautiful people who'll never stop trying. The beautiful people that will like go out of their way until it almost kills them. Because the level of goodness is so good that they can't ever accept that that person that they're with is a counterfeit. That they essentially have an abyss within themselves that they're trying to fill. And they're being utilized as a counterfeit from forces that are not benevolent. And they've been made to target you. <laughs> yeah, because they can spot you and spot you a mile away. These are not twin flames, people. A twin flame probably is one of the rarest things that this realm will ever experience. And if it does happen, let's just say it happens once every thousand years that is to say one couple every thousand years it would change the paradigm of space and time well there's no space and time but it would change the paradigm as we've designed it to be within space and time it would change everything the dynamic between this energetic is that both halves are ready to become one they don't necessarily need to be together to do it. In fact, there's so much one that it's irrelevant. They don't need to. They just know that they are. And they're complete. There's another aspect of this, though. We are complete within ourselves anyway. We are our own duality. And in that, we are our own completeness. So, often... This idea, this concept of another that uh, we're searching for because we're searching for that half of ourselves. Some of that is also based on an illusion because we already are whole. We are already complete. When we split off from ourselves in this experiment, of creation the illusion is the duality but did we really ever split off from ourselves no but when we split off from ourselves we discovered isolation we discovered loneliness it isn't that you're necessarily going to meet literally your other half not that that doesn't happen because it can it's just rare, but you already are your other half. This all has to do with the becoming. There's a lot of distortions with regards to all of this because all of these claims mean that like you're only half of you. You're only half of you and the other half is somewhere out there, but that's not entirely true. You are all of you you always were and you always will be this experiment in duality is for you to learn you it's for you to learn really everything that you are in essence you returning back to the very beginning of everything because you're just remembering literally you're remembering you're remembering what's already there so the obsession with twin flames, the obsession with finding a soulmate has to do with primordial terror of being in materialized form, cut off from your memory of you. This has more to do with the difficulty of the trauma experienced right from the moment that you became matter in density. 
this has to do with the terror and the fear that everybody faces. Because if I said to someone, well, well, what does everybody fear the most? Most people would always say, I fear dying alone. I fear being alone. This is at the heart of why everyone seeks comfort in another so that maybe you don't have to do the work on your own. That maybe by being with somebody else for the interim, it allows you some comfort. Because you don't want to look at yourself and go where you need to go to accept that maybe you already are whole. We seek these things outside ourselves because it makes it easier to live in this state of matter. Because trauma that has been experienced here from the beginning has created a fear that dislocates us from our spirit. Because when you're connected to your spirit and when you bring the spirit into your matter and you live literally in synchronicity with those two being married together, the fear isn't so much. Then it's not so much about just finding somebody that you can be with so that you don't have to be alone. Then then you're okay. You're okay because you're learning how to love yourself because this realm doesn't know anything about love, really. It's so distorted. It's a realm of people who are terrorized and ultimately seek one another and seek all these things outside themselves so that they don't have to experience that terror. Because as long as you have somebody else, it's not so scary. So then we delude ourselves into thinking that we have these twin flames that we are connected to and we're being abused by them. But we justify it thinking, well, they're just our twin flames. That's just what happens. That's normal. Not normal. It's abuse. And abuse isn't normal. And I'm going to say very clearly, if you're in any kind of abusive relationship, it doesn't matter what it is. I don't care how much the mirroring is amazing so that you can't differentiate between you and them because it feels like you're both like one and the same. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good the counterfeit is because let me tell you, they're making the best counterfeits ever. It doesn't matter. If it's abusive, if it's emotionally abusive, if it's verbally abusive, if it's psychologically abusive, if it's physically abusive, it's not love on any grounds. And certainly it is not a twin flame. And twin flames, like I say, just are the rarest ever. So it would be really nice to see people comprehend that this whole obsession with twin flames is not helping anyone. Abuse is abuse. It doesn't matter how much the mirroring is amazing. It doesn't matter how much the love bombing is amazing because let me tell you, they'll abuse you and then they'll love bomb you so that you just don't even know what's happening. Next minute you know you're being love bombed so much that you're just back into the spell and you're drugged again and you feel great and it's all fantastic and you've never been closer to anybody ever in your life. And then they'll abuse you again once they got you nice and comfy in that cycle of abuse that goes on and on. And I want to be very clear about something. Emotional, psychological, and verbal abuse. They are equally as damaging as physical abuse and I want to repeat that because it seems like some people some perpetrators actually justify that their level of abuse isn't as bad because they're not actually 
hitting someone because they're not being physical. Emotional, psychological, and verbal abuse literally are just as damaging, if not more so, than physical. And that I would like everyone to be extremely clear about because if you're in, abu in an abusive relationship, you need to get out. There is no healing in that, okay? There's no white door that you can both walk through and, oh, my God, it's just going to be okay now. Abuse is not going to stop. Once an abuser is there, the abuser is an abuser and they need a lot of help. And the last thing they need is to be in a relationship, okay? So I want to be very clear about that, please. Abusive people should never ever be in a relationship i don't want to demonize an abuser okay because usually abusers come from abuse don't want to demonize them because they need help they need a lot of help and the one thing they need is not to be in relationships so this is what i say they can heal I absolutely believe that everybody can heal from everything, but you cannot do it if you're in denial and if you keep targeting victims so that you never do the work. If this is the situation and you find that you have these issues, then you need to get help and you need not to ever victimize a person. You need not to ever go into a relationship. You need to abstain and get that help. And there is help. And there is hope. We can undo everything. I believe we can heal from everything. And I am experienced my own transmutation of Paralysis, metastasized cancer, and so on, death. But we can't if we deny it. And we can't if we look for something to take us away from the work. And this is where people have to truly, truly, truly be genuinely honest with themselves. And if you find that you have abusive behaviors or tendencies, then you need to ask yourself, some serious questions and you need to get some help and you need to not get involved with anybody. And for those that get involved with people that are abusive, absolutely not love. And you need to look at yourself and you need to look at your own core wounds from when you were a child that basically said it's okay to be abused, that love equals abuse. You're not worthy of real love because you don't know what that is. So you will take this, you will take the abuse because you get love bombed and because you get some drugs, get some love drugs. You need to be real. Real with those core wounds on both sides. I'm not blaming abusers and saying that they're demonic. Some are, for sure. But I'm saying the codependent, the one that falls for it, just the one, just the same as the one that is the abuser. They, they both agree to this. And then what often happens is that the codependent, the original victim, who gives, gives, and gives, and gives, they will find that they get pushed and pulled, 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 pulled by force through the abuse to become abusive themselves. Do you see what this cycle does? It, like, it, it brings destruction, destroys both parties. Both parties become abusers. Nobody ever talks about that. Everybody always wants to talk about just the one, and then the, one's a victim and one's the perpetrator. The reality is, in the end, both become abusive. And yes, Originally, the victim wasn't an abuser. Originally, the victim 
didn't know what was happening and kept telling themselves, justifying, yeah, oh, they really love me and this is really true. And this is like, they're my family and I just, you know, they're my twin, they're my soulmate, whatever. Whatever the mirror tells you is what you're going to tell yourself because you're just blind because you want to believe. You want to believe in the illusion. So you're going to cling to that at the beginning. You're not going to see yourself becoming an abuser. But in this dynamic, I'm telling you, both parties become abusers. There is nothing about this that's love. Okay, this is really an underworld dynamic. This is an underworld counterfeiting to try and once again hijack the heart, once again hijack the person, paralyze them, derail them, basically absolutely inundate them with this renewal of trauma so that they just even get further away from themselves and from their work and healing. This is by design to hijack the heart on both parties, on both sides. The last thing it is, is love. And I'm not saying that the person and the people can't feel a love there. You can feel a love there. Look at uh, Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> That's a type of love. It's a very distorted, disturbed corrupt love which is very well known on this realm corrupt love not saying that you're not going to have a genuine love for one another in some way i mean you, you think about you think about a little child who doesn't know much about love but needs its mother and loves its mother and the child's just you know acting out for love and all manner of things they love but it's they're underdeveloped this is much the same. You can love but be underdeveloped. And these situations, they're always emotionally underdeveloped. There's always trauma, core trauma from their childhoods, from even before they were born and as they were being born, that has made their hearts underdeveloped their emotional state underdeveloped, arrested development. They do not grow up like normal adults. They do not deal with life well. They don't have good coping mechanisms. They have terrible coping mechanisms. It's all distorted. It's all inverted. They invert you and in their distorted thinking and their distorted thinking is all strange but somehow they managed to get you to believe their version. This is the crazy thing about it. They get you to believe in their version of the event that they make out to be like you caused it many times. Now I'm not saying that they don't always use a pearl of truth because it's how it works. They'll take a pearl of truth. They'll take something about what you have done, rooted in a little bit of truth. And then from that point on, they, totally inverted, totally distorted so that you get lost and they make you feel shame and guilt because they're projecting their shame and guilt on you. This is what they do. They project everything onto you that they feel themselves that they hate. Their hatred of themselves, their hatred, their shame and their guilt and everything that they can't stand, they put on you. They project that on you. And then you absorb it. And this is how it goes. This is the cycle until you're destroyed. And the aim of this dynamic is to destroy you. There's no two ways about it. If you feel like you're being abused, if you feel like you're being put down, shamed, guilted, if you feel inverted, if you feel like you're going crazy because you can't make sense of what's going on because you started out knowing what was happening and then by the end of it, you're just saying sorry. <laughs> this is not love. Anything but.
cut it off. Save yourself. Because the longer you're in this dynamic, the more you're being destroyed. And you cannot put a stamp on it. You cannot put colors over it. You cannot erase it. You cannot try and put your illusions over it. Because it is a soul destroying force and it's not real love maybe you need to learn how to love yourself first because how did you get yourself in this situation unless you didn't know anything about love and maybe you need to look at what what are your core wounds that allowed you to go through this that put you that directed you right beneath these soul destroying people that now you're becoming the abuser because you have no choice right you're going to defend yourself you have to defend yourself you can't stand it anymore because you're being abused and you're being completely obliterated. So you're going to fight back. And then that's going to be used against you because this is how it works. That will be used against you and you'll be made out to be the abuser. And real love doesn't abuse ever. It respects. It upholds even if there's differences. It goes out of its way not to abuse you, even in differences. It doesn't put on you their deficits, their hatred of their own self. It doesn't put on you their low self-esteem and all of the inadequacies that they've grown up feeling It doesn't make you a target for their own issues. I think that this problem has become an epidemic along with male enmeshment. Oftentimes when I see this, I see this dynamic that the males have been enmeshed by the mother. I see also that the females have been enmeshed by the father. Covert, covert enmeshment is a form of incest. It confuses the wiring of the brain and the heart. It makes these people emotionally arrested. They cannot handle adult relationships. It confuses them on levels that are so incredibly deep. Now, I will be getting into this in other videos. I will be going very, very deep into enmeshment and how it affects men and how it affects women because it affects them differently. I will be going deep into the dynamics of these dysfunctional relationships. But tonight, I just wanted to be clear about this twin flame obsession. And the distortions because the majority of this all has to do with abusive relationships actually that have nothing to do with twin flames not even soulmates and a person can have many soulmates we can't just look to the outside for anything it's the same it's no different than wanting a savior wanting love Oh, if I just have the right guy, if I just have the right girl, if I just have the right person, I'll be okay. If I just have a savior, I don't want to have to do anything on my own. Because everything, well, I just have to put it on somebody else, right? Then I don't have to be responsible. Somebody can be responsible for me. And I won't have to do anything. No. No, there are no shortcuts here. There are no shortcuts to us and to where we need to go and where we're going. It's in us. 
We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the ones. Us. The answer is within us. Not out there. It's never been out there. This void that we long to fill has to be filled within us. We have to remember and we have to connect with our spirits so that we can feel that we are everything. The infinite verse is in us. We are the infinite verse. We are literally the infinite universes. We are that already. It's in us. We are that. Macro to the ma micro, micro to the macro. It's the same. It's a relationship that we need to really actualize. When we want something in the outside, we're seeing aspects of ourselves that we want within ourselves. We're trying to get it in that way, but Usually that will be met with an illusion. Hard lessons. A lot of these dynamics that I see between people end up becoming very volatile. Most of them are emotionally violent, psychologically violent, mentally violent. Some, yes, end up becoming physically violent. Because it's only a matter of time, if you're in an abusive relationship, that it will turn physical. And that is for sure. Do not kid yourself. Abuse is abuse, and it's not love. That is not a loving relationship, and that has nothing to do with anything based in what is truly genuinely real and good and pure. I hope this helps. I will be doing other videos going very deep into enmeshment and personality disorders that are associated with these dynamics as oftentimes these relationships come with aspects of these personality disorders for lack of a better way of putting it. And this is all due to arrested development and the inability to have done the work because of the wounding and the depth of the wounding and not to mention the fractures and not to mention if uh, you're being my lab. And my labs usually are always engineered in terms of their surroundings. Their surroundings are engineered. Their relationships are engineered. Their lives are terraformed to serve this trauma and to keep them within the trauma cycle of abuse. So there's a lot to this, but I would want everyone to know that if you're in a relationship, no matter how much the mirroring is amazing and no matter how much the love bombing seems really, really good and the drugs, and it just seems really, really real when you're in that love bomb phase and it just, he's got to love me so much or she's got to love me so much because it's like, it's so good. They seem so genuine and there's an aspect to them that's like a child and they're like so real and honest and pure and good. So you see all those things and this is what like, this is the lure. This is what gets you lured into it because you see the child in them and you see the honesty of the child and you fall in love with that because that child is holding hands with your child. So this is a deeply layered dynamic that ultimately, you know, if you're looking at something that, that is maybe a little bit great on the one hand and then holy God, it's terrible on another facet. If you're looking at heaven and hell, you may be looking at their inner child that is wounded and you may be absolutely connecting with that innocent child but energy doesn't lie 
energy cannot ever lie. Abuse is not love. It never will be. Not ever. Love will never seek to abuse you. Will never seek to hurt you. Love will empower you, will make you better, will make you the best person that you are and can be and are meant to be. Love will empower one another. You will get the best out of each other. You will learn and evolve. And you will evolve. Keyword, evolve. When you're in an abusive cycle, relationship there's no evolution it's the reverse it kills the soul and the body there's nothing about that that is love i hope this helps a little bit i hope this clarifies some things There are a lot of layers to this because when these people connect, they're connecting on many, many layers. And depending on what the connection is based from, if it's an MK Ultra connection, if it's a connection that is targeted from the lower astral hell realms, if it's depending on what it is, it's, it can hook into all different kinds of things within you. But Ultimately, it all ends up being the same in the end because if it's abusive, it doesn't matter what the foundation of it is. It doesn't matter who engineered it or for what reason. It's, it's to destroy you. It's to, it's to destroy the two of you. There are no winners. There's a saying that is really lovely, which I believe is in the Bible about love, actually. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. It's a good gauge for what love is. And I know there's a lot of people who fall into believing that they can help their partner because they love them so much that surely they can change and they hold on they hold on with everything that they have that their partners are going to change i know we want to always believe the best and i think that's a really good quality but i don't think that's a good quality if it comes at the expense of you if it means that you're jeopardizing you to do it and I've yet to see once, once, that it's worth that. Because it's not, and I've never once seen that in a situation of a couple together, in an abusive cycle relationship, that it goes well. That somehow, miraculously, things are healed. The healing has to be done on your own. Because the nature of this dynamic is to deflect all responsibility. And to transfer it onto the other. And everything gets so screwed up that you both end up doing it together. Because the end result, if you stay in this, is that you run the risk of losing your life your sanity, your health, your being, who you are, what's right, your compass, your self-esteem. It destroys you on all levels. It destroys both of you. We cannot do the work for anyone else. And no one else can do the work for us. Doesn't matter if you're the abuser, the abusee, the victim, victimizer, 
both end up being the same thing in the end because you, by the time this dynamic is over or near end, you both are abusive. You both are, <laughs> you're both identical. You both end up being the same thing. You don't evolve. You don't heal. You do the reverse. It's not love, people. Love upholds. You gotta love yourself enough to never allow anyone to abuse you. You have to love yourself enough to recognize when someone is coming in your life and not getting the best in you and not creating a space where you feel like you're being empowered, where you feel like you're a better person. If it doesn't empower you, and if it doesn't make you a better person and a better version of you, and if it doesn't empower your independence, independence, yes, I'm saying independence, then it's typically a codependent relationship, which means that you have issues to look at. Core wounds, things that are making you dependent, and that makes you blind to being abused. You're vulnerable. You gotta love yourself more. More. So that you don't ever, ever let yourself be abused. Because there's never any justification. There's never any arguments that are ever going to justify this. There are never any reasons, nothing. Abuse is abuse. So if you find yourself in a situation and you're wondering and you're perplexed and you're tormented and tortured and you're buying books and you're obsessing about this, that's your answer. <laughs> That is your answer. Get away. Cut it off. Love yourself. Be kind and good to yourself. Because if you tell your universe that you are worth it because you are love, then your universe is not going to send you this. You're not going to be vulnerable to these counterfeits. You're not going to be vulnerable to the engineering of all these hell realms that target primes and reels and meccas, you will not be vulnerable then and you will see it a mile away. And it will not be able to hook into you because there won't be anything that it can hook into. This is a journey of us discovering our own love story. And the irony is we want to love others so badly, but in essence, it's because we want to love ourselves and we have to love ourselves. We cannot love another truly unless we love ourselves. And that, I know that sounds like, you know, we've heard that before, but it's true. It's true. Usually our desire to love something from outside ourselves first and foremost comes because we are so desperate for our own love. To love ourselves. <laughs> that we look for it from someone else who can reflect that back to us. And then we become vulnerable because we come from a place of deficit. Deficit in ourselves. when that happens, you begin to be a mirror of what that want and that deficit is. 
and what comes to you are counterfeits and narcissists and borderlines and all manner of nightmares. The kingdom of heaven is within you. You are the kingdom of heaven. Be the reflection of that to your universe. And your universe will be a reflection of that back. This is the time that everyone is to step into their sovereignty, into their power, into their remembrance, their own pure will. It's time for your will to be enacted. It's no longer a time for anything to do it for you. And that means love. It doesn't exclude love. We're here to be responsible for ourselves 100%. 100%. It's time for everyone to take their universes in their own hand, in their own will and spirit and mind and body and heart and decide for you what you want, what you want to actualize in your universe. Sovereignty, your authority, your memory, your complete becoming. This is where we are right now. And this is in your hands. It's also time on a different topic for the world and the world banking systems and governments and those that have been given the position of power. It's not real power. They're just under the guise of power to release funds to the children of the earth, to the children of Terra. So, and that too has to do with sovereignty and authority and people being in control of their own will. And this is ultimately what this is about. And this is ultimately what this whole experience is. And even the, the discussion about twin flames and love and what isn't love and what is love. It all has to do with this. You can't exclude one thing from the other. It all has to do with this. So this is where we're at. We are infinite. We are complete. Always were. We are whole. It's always been in us. It is what we are, literally. The becoming is us actualizing this all. It's you actualizing this all. By virtue of being and being conscious and being conscious of your will, which means also with regards to your relationship with the world and how and what you accept, the more conscious you are, you're not going to accept counterfeits. On any level. It all has to do with that place inside yourself that's hurting and just wants acceptance and just wants to be loved because you, because you didn't experience it, because you were neglected. But that isn't the real you. That is a part, one part of you that experienced your creation in this narrative, but it's not necessarily real. It isn't necessarily who you are, what you are. Now we're here to be conscious fully. And by virtue of being conscious, we have to be responsible for everything. So that means that we have to be willing to forego illusions right down to what we tell ourselves about love. Because the truth is, most don't even know what that is. 
can't remember what that is. If there's a memory, it's faint. And this is where we're aspiring to. So many accept counterfeit versions. Things that are sabotaging. This, anything that sabotages you keeps you from your authority, from your sovereignty, from your will, from your actualizing. Love is not abuse. Doesn't matter if it's a partner, a parent, a friend. If it's abusive, it's not love. And we all know what abuse is. So we cannot dispute or argue what that is. We know what it is when it happens. When we feel it, we recognize it and we know it. But no matter what you tell yourself in this situation, if you're involved in a relationship like this and you want to believe so badly that it's, that if you stick it out long enough, that you just, if you love them through it, if you love them enough, no, it's an illusion. Because you will never, ever, ever be able to love them enough because the problem isn't with you. It's not about you. nothing to do with you but maybe you got to ask yourself a question why <laughs> why you're telling yourself that why you think that if you can love something enough if you can just put up with enough abuse that they'll be okay see because then you have to look at yourself forget about the abuser and you know in some ways that's even easier to figure out than for a person who's putting themselves in the position of being abused and thinking if they just love the person enough. You just got to look in yourself and your core wounds and be honest about it and get the healing you need. And get the strength to remove yourself, both of you, because if there's any real love there at all, like at all, buried beneath the layers of distortion, then love yourselves and each other enough to let one another go so that you can both get healing. So that you don't destroy one another and yourselves along the way. There's a lot of power in this and there's a lot of good experiences that come of this because this allows one to know themselves even more and on deeper levels. This has to do about both parties being handicapped in certain ways. And they live out that handicapped situation together and they make each other targets. They don't empower each other. This is disabling. It disables and paralyzes and harms and destroys. And this too is the journey that we're on to find out, to return to what we've always known and been, what we are, which is love. Love, not corrupted love, not distorted love, not arrested development love, not crippled love. Real love. something we need to think about thank you everyone i hope this has helped 
I will be going further into enmeshment and personality disordered relationship dynamics. And um, we'll also be going further into counterfeit healing and counterfeit healers and the epidemic that's happening, the narcissistic counterfeit reality that we're in right down to the healing right down to the pretense of truth yeah yeah all this is to empower us all this is for our emancipation and to begin to discern between what is true and what isn't true this is all so that you Get back your gifts of discernment, of ability, of strength, power, to stand in your authority and sovereignty, to know what that is, and to remember. Thank you, everyone. Sovereign Key. Have a good night. As she summons me across the sea.